Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we just went over the Steelers officially naming Russell Wilson as their starting quarterback over Justin Fields. I do still expect a quarterback switch to be made halfway through the season, and I don't think this will affect their record that much. Although I do, I still would have started just uh, Justin Fields over Russell Wilson. In this segment, we're going to continue our series of starting our fantasy football coverage. We did our wide receiver top 24 rankings yesterday. Today, we're moving on to the other most important position in fantasy football, the running backs. This is a position group that depending on your strategy, you might rush to take some of these top guys you might wait to take some of these guys i have rated a little bit lower but we're going to take a look at my top 24 anyway before we get into that though remember if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net or if you are on youtube you can use that super chat feature if you do either of those two things a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Wednesday afternoon. But like I was saying, we are going to start off our running back coverage today. As you see here, I've got a beautiful 1 through 24 of my personal top 24 fantasy running backs. And we're starting off a little bit controversial at the top. At number one, I have Brees Hall. And that's not necessarily a knock on Christian McCaffrey. This is more because... Since 2013, which is as far back as uh, I could find data on this, since 2013, there has only been one time where a running back went back-to-back -back and ended up being the running back one overall. That was Todd Gurley in 2017 and 2018. And as much as I think Christian McCaffrey is a great player, this is a guy that has an injury history this is a guy that there have been rumors of them cutting back on his workload a little bit. This is a guy that I think he's not going to buck historical trends. So we need to pick a new number one, and that new number one for me is Brees Hall. Brees Hall is a guy that checks all the boxes you want to. He's a receiving back. For PPR, half PPR formats, that's huge. He doesn't really have any real competition. Now, they did end up drafting a rookie, but... He's not really going to eat into the carries that much. He might get a couple drives to spell Brees Hall, but he's not really going to take much of the workload. So that's another checkbox for one Brees Hall. He's also on a supposedly high-powered offense. I know not everyone is on board with this, but I believe Aaron Rodgers still has it in him. People are saying he lost it, but we he didn't play last season. He played four snaps that's not enough for me to give up on a future MVP, a future all Hall of Famer, four-time MVP. He hasn't given me anything not to believe in. That offense is going to be great. They're going to be winning games, so they're going to need to run the ball a lot. That is a lot of boxes to check off in favor of Brees Hall, and he's just a really good player. He's my number one overall back. And while at the same time, all those things could be said for my number two back, Christian McCaffrey. Again, the only reason I have him below Brees Hall is because historical precedent, precedent uh, only one player since 2008 has been able to repeat as that number one running back. That is Todd Gurley in 2017 and 2018. So it's not something that is going to continue to happen, but there definitely is a chance. I understand, uh, I understand all the conversation around Christian McCaffrey. At number three, I've got Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley is one of those guys that is undisputedly one of the best backs in football. I think him, Christian McCaffrey, just as far as straight running backs, taking the fantasy aspect out of it, are the two best backs in football. He can do everything you want him to do. He's one of the most elusive runners, and he can handle a really heavy workload. He leaves the Giants, which... Not a fun situation for me personally as a fan, but he's going to the best situation he's ever been in is in his career. 
the last time we saw something like this happen, that running back exploded, right? This is this is this is this is absolutely built for success for Saquon Barkley behind one of the best offensives in the league with a play action uh, and RPO system that's going to be right there, just like he had in New York that he thrived in. This is going to be huge for the Eagles, huge for Saquon Barkley. I have him at three. At four, we have Bijan Robinson. And again, I think really the top five guys uh, are you can't really miss on. All five of these top guys, uh, knock on wood, hopefully they stay healthy. All five of them should be top running backs in this league. That being said, at number four, I have Bijan Robinson, and I know a lot of people have him at three ahead of Saquon, but I like the Eagles' offense a little more. I like the at, I like the connection that he's going to have with you know Jalen Hurts, Saquon, and the threat of the run that Kirk Cousins doesn't give to Bijan Robinson. Bijan's going to be great. He's he might catch a couple more balls. I don't think he has that touchdown upside, though, so I think Saquon is going to take that spot at three, and Bijan's going to be at four. At five, we have Jonathan Taylor, and he's the last of these backs that I feel like are, a guy, are guys that shouldn't get out of the first round. If any of these five guys are staring at you at any point in the second round and you don't think they're doing something wrong, in my opinion, I think these are the guys that should be off the board within the first 12 picks. And then you can get into some discussions about the rest of them. But Jonathan Taylor has proven consistently he's one of the best backs in the league. He was great at Wisconsin. He comes into the league, starts dominating. He missed a bunch of games last year. Still, he had a really great season. He was kind of a work share. Getting Anthony Richardson in that backfield with him, again, it's going to provide more rushing lanes because that threat of Anthony Richardson running with the ball is something that Arminshu wasn't providing for the Colts last season. That offline is one of the best leagues. He should continue to dominate. Jonathan Taylor is my number five running back. And number six, I have Isaiah Pacheco. These are This is when we get to that second tier of backs, at least for me. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco is a hard runner in a really good offense with the Kansas City Chiefs. You want shares of that offense as much as you possibly can. He was really good last year. He was one of the biggest reasons why they were able to make a run to the Super Bowl. He kept the Chiefs in it when they were struggling. Now, I do think he's going to take he's he's going to take a little bit more of a back seat this season cuz the Chiefs got a little few a lot more wins in the passing game. That's not to say he's to be great. He should get his fair share. I just think he's going to get a couple less touches this year than he did last year. At number 7, I have Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs is a fascinating talent. He's a guy that, despite everything, in the first round, both overall, way too high for most running backs, at least in common consensus. He's a guy that did his thing, did his job. He finished the RB10 last year in a system split with David Montgomery. We'll get to that later on on the list. I do have David Montgomery on here. Jameer Gibbs is going to be good. He's going to be really good. He should, theoretically get a slightly heavier workload, although in the preseason, he did get a little bit of a hamstring issue, so that's something to watch. And he did, uh, and, and the way that the Lions are running it, seem, seemingly, they're doing the same thing that they did last year. So he should get a little more touches, but he was still extremely successful last year, and I don't see a reason why he's not going to finish as a top 10 running back in fantasy. At number eight, Travis Etienne Jr. He's a guy that I am a little worried will have a little bit of regression, but the fall off at running back is kind of big here. Travis Etienne, we saw the fall off towards the end of the year last year anyway. If you want to look at his numbers from the end of last season, Travis Etienne through the first, before the bye had 16, 4, 13, 7, 32, 20, 19, 22. After the week nine bye, he goes on a stretch of 4, 5, 8, 13, 13, 5, 3, 23, and 8. So you do see a little bit of that fall off. Now, a lot of that does coincide with a Trevor Lawrence injury, which is going to be a big thing for this Jacksonville Jaguars offense. You know, the pressure goes more on the running back. He had a lot of usage, so maybe we get a little bit toned down, but he's a guy that can catch a lot of balls. He's a guy that can, as we saw, 
can handle a workload. We might see not uh, every single drive back. Maybe he'll get a little bit of a rest. Maybe Tank Bigsby takes up a couple of couple of drives out of his hands. But he should. he's still one of the more premier talents in the NFL, and I think he should still get plenty of touches, plenty of touchdowns. I'm not that worried about him. At number nine, we have Derrick Henry. And he's due maybe for a little regression. Again, a lot of these guys are going to have slightly worse seasons. Age. He's going to a much better situation, though. A much better running back. Uh, a much better running friendly offense. A much better offensive line. He's not going to go up against stacked boxes. He has the Lamar Jackson effect with him. He should be great. It's a much better offense. He's going to get a lot more touchdowns. I think he'll get less yards, though, less usage. I think the Ravens are going to try to keep him healthy for deeper playoff runs, so they're not going to give him that 20, 30 carries a game that he's used to getting in Tennessee. It's not to say he can't handle it, but I have him down at 9 because I think his workload will be a little bit reduced, but I love him this season. At number 10, I have Kyron Williams, and I know a lot of people have Kyron Williams a lot higher up on their list than I do. And there's nothing wrong with Kyron Williams. This isn't a bet on an injury, the reason that I'm dropping him. The reason is he was very touchdown dependent when you when you when you looked at his stats this last season. Scored a lot of touchdowns. There were a lot of short touchdowns. The Rams, I think, are going to get back into their passing offense. You have both Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua healthy now, and maybe that opens up the box a little more for Kyron Williams Williams, but he announces the partner. That's never good for injury's sake. I'm not preying on anybody's downfall here, but he was announced as the punt returner today. They also drafted Blake, Blake Corum, a rookie that I really like out of Michigan. That doesn't help his chances to be that lead back for the entire season. Another thing that I am worried about. The other thing is, we were talking about historical trends for running backs. There hasn't been more than six of the six six running backs in the top 12 from previous seasons to stay in the top 12 since 2018. It just hasn't happened. Excuse me. These are guys that, based on my list, we have eight of them. So there's a couple of guys that might move up or down. But a lot of these guys, I think, are due for a little bit of regression from last season, and Kyron Williams is definitely one of them. More competition, uh, and he's, he was very touchdown dependent for my liking. At 11, we have James Cook. I love James Cook a lot. I'm a James Cook believer. He's not a top 10 back, though. Uh, we saw him get a lot of usage last season with the Buffalo Bills. We saw him get those touchdown we got we saw we saw him get a lot of attention from the Bills offense the running game was going more he was the first real lead back that they've had since Josh Allen got there but he doesn't have that top 10 ranking because Josh Allen is going to steal a lot of yards from them because Josh Allen is going to continue to be that leading rusher what I love from him is his ability to go out and catch the ball that's something that a lot of players a lot of running backs don't have all the time James Cook is a great runner he is a great pass catcher, and he's really good for that offense. So I don't see a reason why he shouldn't be in the top 12. And wrapping up the top 12 here, at number 12, rookie sensation Devon Achan. If you if you look at guys that lit the league on fire, in limited play, Devon Achan did that certainly. He was He's in a crowded backfield in Miami with Raheem Mostert, who finished as the overall RB2 last year. But if you go by the per-game basis, Devon Achan was one of the best backs in the entire league. In fact, you go to the average, he was fourth in the league, 14.9 points. He had a lot of games off, a couple games that he got like no touches in, but he was averaging almost seven yards a carry as a rookie. He's so explosive. That offense is built for him. He can catch the ball. He is going to be awesome this year. He should take a bigger workload, cut more into Raheem Mostert's snaps and carries as he continues to assert himself as who I believe will end up being the RB1 in Miami by the end of this season. 
Those are my top 12. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll go through the rest of this list. We're going to go over the RB2 area of the draft. Uh, let me know if you have any uh, issues with my list so far. But like I said, we'll be right back, finishing up this list here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 